welcome to CX Today. My name is Charlie and today I'm delighted to be joined by Callan Shabella, EVP of Product Management at Five9. Callan, it's great to have you join us. How are you doing today? Good, thank you Charlie. Great to be here. Yeah, and it's great to uh, have you join us and today we're going to be talking about a very exciting topic of collaborative intelligence and how contact centres can best blend their humans with automated uh, agents and automation. Um, so let's first kind of kick off uh, by talking about how contact centers typically approach customer journey automation. Uh, and it'd be good to get your thoughts on here on kind of the pitfalls um, that you've seen contact centers uh, fall into. Yeah, so I mean, if we look a little bit kind of at the history of this space, like if we go look over the say the last kind of 20 years, uh, when sort of self-service technologies around uh, you know, conversational automation first came out, uh, like in the early 2000s, they were generally seen as sort of big monolithic projects that cost millions of dollars and really the largest organizations were the only ones that could really afford to do them. And there was a lot of sort of uh, human labor spent building uh, and tuning sort of grammars and things like that. That has quite, you know, changed quite a lot in the last few years. Uh, and the, the sort of the modern conversational technologies sort of make it available to pretty much you know, any sized organization today uh, using very different approaches to kind of solving this problem. Pretty much everything that we see today revolves around the concept of sort of artificial intelligence being, um, I guess, embedded into, uh, into the solution in some way, generally in the form of a, you know, natural language processing uh, uh, or the actual speech recognition um, you know, itself. The biggest issue we see for people that are just starting on this journey as it relates to conversational automation is not being very clear to themselves and to their stakeholders about what success looks like for the organization and what success metrics they want to use in measuring the performance of, of these systems. One of the uh, you know one of the challenges if we go back a bit in time where, where let's say um, you know IVRs were kind of more commonplace when you when you went live with an IDR project, it was kind of like pretty much the end of the project. Like you know, you started taking traffic and 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 you looked at how it went. In a conversational AI project, going live and taking sort of customer calls is really just one step along the way, uh, and you then get into sort of this tuning and training process. And that's why why you really need to be clear about what success looks like for you because you can always do a little bit better. You can always spend a little bit more time. You can always add a little bit more functionality into kind of what the natural language processing understands. Uh, and so knowing where where success is and what you what you are aiming to achieve when you set out on that journey is probably the biggest thing we see customers, um, you know, as a pit, as a pitfall for new customers. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's that uh, old set and forget um, pitfall that we uh, that we see a lot uh, within the contact center space. But I also thought kind of your points there, kind of around the long term reviews. You know, if chatbots not a plug in and play uh, technology, and that how popular uh, how problems can emerge um, further down the line. I thought that was especially uh, interesting. Um, but now we kind of move into this uh, arena of uh, collaborative intelligence. How do you think? Um, that collaborative intelligence can help uh, contact centers overcome these problems? Yeah, so collaborative intelligence is really the idea that, sit, that says uh, conversational automation is not a, about doing away with the people in your contact center. Rather, it is about getting those people in your contact center, which are your, you, you know, your, your highest value and most costly resource, having them work on the activities within your contact center that add the, add the most value. And where you see, uh, you know, high frequency of sort of relatively low value interactions, using those, uh, user automation on those, uh, those, those types of interactions. Now, what that means for any particular um, contact center is that the agents are then able to do a better job on the very high value activities that they have. So let's use an example. Uh, Maybe you're doing some sort of parcel, maybe you're a logistics company and you have like parcel tracking as a sort of a really common thing. In this day and age, there's no reason why uh, a person should need to take the call of like, where's my parcel, has it been delivered, all of that sort of stuff. However, if you get to a conversation where the customer, where you tell the customer, look, your parcel was delivered yesterday and they say, look, well, I didn't get it, it's been stolen or something's gone wrong. It's at that point that you want the human involved in, in that interaction. 
And that's of it now becomes a very high value activity for that contact center to do because the chances of having a very poor experience and maybe losing a customer, you know, just went up sort of exponentially. So collaborative intelligence is really about making sure that you use technology to uh, essentially separate uh, relatively low value, high frequency interactions from those high value, uh, but ho hopefully low, lower frequency interactions that you have. There's also another aspect of collaborative intelligence, which is basically saying the people that understand the most about your contact center and often the most about your business are the people that work in that contact center. And so using their knowledge to train and tune the systems that are automated um, is, is, is really a, you know, a good example of that sort of collaboration between software and people. And so uh, at Five9, we work a lot on trying to uh, close that loop uh, so that uh, the human agents that understand a lot about their organization can have a big influence on how that conversational AI works. Yeah, I think uh, I think that that last uh, use case almost um, that you gave is particularly exciting. You know, the fact that agents can also do a lot of the things like data labeling and stuff that will help AI progress. I think that's an especially uh, interesting um, part of where kind of contact center AI is evolving. Um, but kind of going back to kind of the, the crunch um, of your point there, I think my next question to you would be kind of how would you recommend contact centers start finding the best balance between bots and humans? Well, the, the, the absolute best way is to use, um, again, uh, software, particularly you know, analytics software, uh, to identify those really good candidates for automation. Um, we can talk you know, a, a lot more about that. But, the, um, but, but it, it, at least for most organizations, if, they, if they're not at that level of sophistication yet, and, and many of them are not, it's about having a good sense of the types of interactions that take place in their contact center, and then looking for those um, from, a, from a conversational complexity point of view that make the best candidates for automation, and then focusing on, on those. Uh, going back to your earlier question about pitfalls, sometimes when a, when a uh, an organization is embarking on sort of a conversational AI journey, they, they aim for like the very biggest, hardest problem uh, as their first problem. We have found that is not really a good strategy. If you identify your good candidates for automation, and there's plenty of techniques you can use to sort of um, assess those uh, and then pick them off one by one, it's a much better way and much more reliable way of getting a good return on the investment that you're making because you get that return uh, incrementally as you're building things out as opposed to having some giant project that you're going to measure uh, you know in a year from now and hopefully there's some return there hmm. yeah yeah I think that's uh, that's the assessing the contact drivers kind of is the key uh, message there but I also think you know there's lots of other reasons why contact things can do that it's not only to add bots I guess it's also to help them identify the upstream issues which most urgently need fix and also Kind of your point as well about using speech analytics to do that, you can kind of quantify the costs almost by actually getting an insight into demands. I think, yeah, yeah I'm, sure, I'm sure we could talk about uh, talk about that a lot more. But one uh, particularly interesting use case, um, which I really wanted to kind of get your thoughts on, uh, kind of as as the industry expert, Callan, is uh, post call analytics. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about how this works? Yeah, so th there's there's sort of um like we see a lot with this industry, there's a lot of change in that particular segment uh, in terms of the technologies and the approaches that have been used. Uh, you know, let's go back a few years compared to like right now. So let's go back a few years and we look at sort of typical post-call analytics um, implementations. They typically revolve around, they take a call, they record it, uh, they then take a transcription of that call and then they use some techniques to identify, you know, key, key words or perhaps key phrases like, you know, uh, n-grams, you know, like three words in a row or something like that. Um, and then they look at the frequency of that and they go, well, this call is some, you know, something to do with that. If we jump forward to today, uh, the kind of techniques that we have powered by uh, artificial intelligence uh, really are changing how that is done. So you still often take a phone call, you then take a transcription. Now, now, once you have a transcription, it's in text. So if you're coming from a chatbot world, it's going to start in text. But the next part is the really interesting part, and that's where you use AI to do essentially a summarization of that, of that entire interaction. Uh, and it could be quite a complex summarization, you know, like the, the customer did this, and then they asked about that, and so on. Uh, but really getting to the meaning of what the conversation has been about, 
um, and then using clustering technology uh, to cluster those conversations to see, uh, going back to the earlier point, what are the really good candidates for automation or what are the problem areas in the contact center and being able to identify those uh, basically automatically. Uh, now, this is still uh, an emerging space. It's something that Five9 is investing a, a lot in, but some of the some results that we're seeing here are really quite uh, impressive. And really this sort of summarization capability has only been around maybe, let's say, you know, a year or two at the, at the most in terms of the sophistication of summarization that you can do. The, the value of summarization is that it really gives you the ability, probably for the first time, to unlock the conversational content uh, within a long form conversation, whether it be phone call or chatbot or whatever. Um, whereas prior to that, most contact centers really only had like the, the quantitative data from their, their contact center. So they knew how many calls went to this skill group or they knew what the disposition code that the human agent you know, used when they wrapped up the call at the end. And that was really all they had to kind of go on. Um, this is radically changing how that, that kind of activity is done. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, th I think that summarization is particularly interesting from an agent experience point of view. They're not the creators of after call work anymore. They're the editors and how much handling time that could potentially save on every call is quite startling actually. And you mentioned disposition data as well, automatically doing that. I mean, alone and the benefits that gets you in unknowing your contact drivers, which goes back to, uh, the, to our previous uh, question and answer. I think that's, uh, yeah, I think that's a use case with extreme potential and it will be interesting um, now kind of talk to you to ask you which other use cases you're seeing which really excite you uh, for collaborative intelligence. I mean, uh, there's, there's quite, I mean, there's quite a lot. It's, it's such a sort of uh, burgeoning space and the, and the rate of change you know, the rate of change in contact centers today is really unlike anything I've seen and I've obviously been working in this space for, you know, 20 odd years now. Um, I think one of the, the really interesting um, aspects that we're seeing over the last, let's say, 18 months is this whole notion that uh, contact centers of the future will be underpinned by language models and that a, a model is something which not a lot of people really understand today, but it's going to be like a common component of the modern contact center. People are gonna to want to know what models are you running in there? How did you build those models? Um, you know, uh, where did you source the training data for your models and so on? And so one of the interesting areas of collaborative intelligence is how you build that model and how you tune that model. And, and it goes back to a little bit of what I said um, earlier around unlocking the, the, the knowledge within your human agents and creating um, tools and uh, sort of methodologies that allow them to build and tune a language model. Because, you know, even today, the idea of building and tuning a language model is something that a, a computational linguist or, or somebody that is sort of, uh, you know, uh, maybe with an academic background in sort of, um, you know, language taxonomy and so on would, would be working on. But this is getting that uh, simplified into a way where just the business users and the business experts can use and these tools to build these models is going to really widen what you can use with um, collaborative intelligence. And so once we have that, and we see early uh, results of that now with, with customers at Five9 building or starting to build their own models and tune their own models, um, it really could go anywhere from there. So I, I guess the exciting bit is, um, you, we're not exactly sure where it will go, but we know that the ability to build and tune models is going to underpin it, and that's a big, big R&D project that we're working on right now. Mm. Yeah, so I think that's a really, um, a really nice vision, almost, of the future of the contact center. It's interesting, actually, to hear that you have some products, uh, some projects underway at Five9 already to kind of uh, elicit uh, or work towards that vision. I think that's uh, yeah, particularly fascinating. But I also think um, that's a really uh, great uh, way looking into the future to end uh, today's conversation. So thank you very much uh, for all of your insights and for joining me today, Carl. You're welcome. Thank you, Charlie. Excellent. And thank you, everybody, for watching too. Bye for now. <laughs>